Hello friends, my name is Wendy Ness, and today I've got kind of a staple video for you guys that I've never done. I'll be talking about popular books that I didn't like. Lots of times when I get angry people commenting on my negative reviews, somewhere in their comment they'll include the line, do you even like anything? This video will probably not convince them that I do. First up, the Twilight series by Stephanie Meyer, surprising exactly no one. I promise you that this isn't just me bashing on Twilight because it's popular or because it was geared towards young girls or because it's full of vampires. I objectively think that Twilight is garbage. It is poorly written, thinly plotted, it perpetuates harmful ideals, it's a racist, it romanticizes an abusive relationship, and it confuses its own internal lore, which is ridiculous at best. I read the series as an adult and for a specific project, and I thought that I had reached maximum Twilight anger in the first book when Edward was watching Bella sleeping and manipulating her and telling her how much he wanted to date her even though he also wanted to actually murder her. So by the time that we got to Breaking Dawn with the perpetual punishing of Bella's sexuality, Edward delivering his own baby via teeth, and Jacob imprinting on a child, and everyone just standing around having actual thoughts about how Jacob is gonna bone this baby one day. By that point, I was just like a literal human-shaped collection of anger. Awful, just completely awful, and I haven't even mentioned the appropriation of the native lore. And she takes that lore and makes these characters that are then inferior to the superior often white slash pale race. I could talk about this forever, one, because I hated it, and two, because there are like endless examples of why this was really, really bad and I didn't like any of it. To get another obvious one out of the way, the Fifty Shades series by E.L. James. If anything that I say about this book sounds familiar, it's because E.L. James was amazing at plagiarizing the most pernicious aspects of Twilight and throwing us into the depths of fan fiction that gives fan fiction a bad name. Christian Grey is an abuser and a rapist and nobody can convince me that he's not also a murderer. This is a plotless spiral of an abusive relationship disguised as erotica. Everything is underdeveloped and it is not only poorly written, it is often nonsensical. E.L. James says things and describe things and facial expression, she makes her character do things and think in ways that just plain does not make sense. Anastasia Steele is both a victim of abuse and one of the worst characters that I've ever read about. She's the worst daughter, she's the worst friend, she's a horrible employee. Being in her head was torture, torture I thought would be unmatched until I read Grey and realized that it was actually in fact worse to be in his head. And that's really the lesson here I think is that bad stories can always find a way to hurt us worse. There is nothing to take away from here for me personally. Any credit that I could give this story for being fast paced or readable is immediately negated by the fact that I personally personally cannot find any fun or entertainment in a story that is about a man emotionally manipulating and physically abusing a woman. And that's it. Next up is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I have so many friends that love the series. I'm sorry. I love you, but I really, really didn't like City of Bones. I can't speak to how Cassandra Clare's writing has improved over time, but in City of Bones, it is exactly the kind of writing that I don't find enjoyable. Clare over describes, but in a very simplistic way, filling her narrator's observations with too many details, mistimed and ill-placed. If it's time to probably be noticing danger, Claire Larry's over here noticing the main love interest eye color. It all really felt cheesy to me. It's just incredibly cheesy. And while I know that not all plots have to be complicated, there has to be something that carries the story. Here it wasn't the writing for me, it wasn't the plots, and it certainly was not the characters. It becomes painful in this very simplistic plot as Clary plods along, not really able to connect any dots or figure anything out in a pace that I felt was satisfying. All of the characters felt 2D to me, especially the side characters. The story really wanted us to focus on Clary and Jace and they were two characters that I did not enjoy reading about at all. Clary is another YA heroine in the same mold where she is an, a really bad friend and she's 
a little self-absorbed and she's kind of passive aggressively negative towards everybody that she meets except for Jace of course who is an asshole. Next up Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I remember that around the time that this was released John Green was hyping this up a lot which is really nice of John Green but also I fell for the hype and did not enjoy this. I to this day am amazed at this story that features a fire starter and monsters and time travel and soulless creatures could ultimately be so bland I think it's an extension of the fact that I got little to no personality from the main character. I think there was a gimmick here and the story paid so much attention to making the gimmick work that it didn't pay enough attention to those plot points or to its main characters. Next, The Selection by Kira Cass. I always find it difficult to give voice to this complaint or to find the words to do this complaint justice because I know that this is YA and as such it was not written for me or directed towards me as an audience but even knowing that this is YA I felt like this book Book was written even younger than that. I found that this whole thing had a simplistic talking down to you style which was annoying on top of the fact that I already found the main character incredibly annoying. It was heavy-handed and it fed you every moment and in general it just followed a tell and don't show kind of policy which was the most evident in the complete lack of world building in this entire story. I mean it tried, it gave you a setup to this world and what was happening but it was just so superficial and full of plot holes and I don't know if the author attempted to fix that in further books but there was nothing here to tempt me into further books. You plot along in this story that has the vaguest of explanations to the world and the setup and the only thing that really happens is the elimination of these selection girls that you don't know and don't care about. You go through all of this expecting that there's going to be some kind of resolution at the end and it's very open-ended and clearly made to be a series which only made me even more upset. 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. This story failed for me on a number of levels and I think the first is that it takes this very heavy and very serious topic and writes it in a lens that I, I think did not do any justice to the story and it did so with no style, with no grace, with no description, with no emotional depth, and with no nuance. It's a story that deals in flashback but still manages to be very linear in the way that it's told. It, Clay brings us along in the narration in a very I did this and then I did this and then I did this kind of way. Additionally, I just thought it told a very irresponsible story of suicide and mental health. By using the tapes in the way that it did, I think it centers the story on this feeling of post-mortem resolution which doesn't exist with suicide. It frames Hannah's story around around Clay. And it used sexual assault in a way that did not give any real regard to the victim. I felt like it was used in a way that was really about the shock value and what that assault could add to the plot. The whole thing just put me very ill at ease and I would like to never read Jay Asher again. Thank you. One of the videos that gives me the most grief on my channel is my review of Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. Some people, usually boys, get really angry that I did not enjoy this book and I even gave it two stars and said that I saw how some of the adventure side of it was fun and did contribute something to the story overall. Ultimately though this wish fulfillment story about a nerd boy in which all of the recognized female characters in it serve as love interest to further advance the nerd boy story plots like it wasn't for me. It was dense with references and written in a way that I felt was gratuitous and speaking down to you versus trying to embrace you in the references and include you in that culture. And at the end of the day the main driver of the action felt a little unexplained to me. Like why the game? Why was this all set up? And I, I get what the end product was but I was never explained the real motivations of why you would take this big risk and put all of this inside of the... I, it just felt a little open-ended to me in certain of having the adventure but not really addressing why it was necessary in the first place. Men, I get it, you love the 80s, you love video games, and you love this book, it's fine, I didn't like it, please leave me alone. Next up is Fallen by Lauren Kate. I read this many many years ago but it always stands out as a book in my memory that just 
filled me with all of the bad feelings, all of the negative feelings. I read it when the hype was very strong. I think the last book in the series was coming out and so everybody was talking about it mostly on Goodreads at that point which is where I was participating in the bookish community so I was like oh let me go back and read the first book in the series which ended up being pretty much Twilight but with angels. It was definitely around the time where Twilight but with fill in the blank was like a big thing. Obviously it ended up being not for me. The entire premise is that these two people keep falling in love but whenever they kiss the girl disintegrates and then is reincarnated but like they never stop kissing so this just keeps happening over and over again. I guess the point is that the girl when she's reincarnated doesn't remember any of this so it's on the boy to like not kiss her or fall in love with her which then gives him an excuse to treat her like a dumpster for the entirety of the story and still the girl falls in love with him for some reason. I mentioned this being about angels and there's like a reform school and like some other plot I'm sure but it's not one that I actually remember because it doesn't actually matter. Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. You knew it was coming didn't you? I want to be honest here because I think one of the most fascinating things about media and media analysis is all of the context and bias that we bring to a piece of media. When I finished the book it was like a two-star read for me but since then I think the Sarah J Maas fandom has made me hate this book even more. And please understand I'm not talking ill of her fans or saying anything against somebody who is a Sarah J Maas fan. I think it's the unabashed love for this story that I see as very obviously lower quality that it just in my feelings it, it the more that people defend it and love it it's like the opposite happens to my feelings like the more I'm like really because they think I hate it and there are a lot of people that I've spoken to who say that they see all of my points and why I didn't like it and they agree that it is not the best quality or it is bad in x y and z aspects but they love it anyway which I think is frustrating to hear for me and again not toward anybody specifically but just in the way that media can really get under your skin or make you feel things and I think it's the same on the positive or the negative end and for some reason it's just the story gets under my skin. It's been in some ways I will even admit petty but I can be honest about that. The ways in which I didn't enjoy the story of its own merit at first and since then in my pettiness and in my repeated discussions of it it's just gotten worse and worse in my estimation. But again back to not liking it of its own merit. I have like a deep down hatred for Sarah J Mass's writing style. She opened my eyes to a level of abusive punctuation that I never knew was possible. I also never knew it was possible to be forced into a plot quite the way that she forces her readers. She tells and tells and tells and shows very little and in this book specifically she goes as far as cutting away from the main action and telling all of that in summary in order to really bolster what she apparently thinks is the more important part of the story which is the girl flirting around the castle with two guys who are not that great, kind of moody. Uh, moody to rude is like their range of emotions. The plot is incidental and even the characterizations that she gives like assassin and survivor, those things are ignored in service of the story that Mass thinks is really important here which are like the pretty dresses and the love interest and the romance side of it. I love a good romance book so I'm not even speaking bad about that if that's what it wanted to be but this is neither a good action story nor a good romance and I just don't think it's worthy of the praise that it receives. And on that note, A Court of Thorns and Roses also by Sarah J Maas, take everything that I said about Throne of Glass and just multiply it because this one was worse. She upped her M dash game, she upped her ellipses game, she calls her main character badass but makes her even more powerless and useless at least especially in this first entry into the series. She makes her male characters even bigger assholes and she makes her plot even more dependent on the girl falling in love with one or both of them. I hated this one when I finished even more than I disliked Throne of Glass so you can only imagine Imagine how much that has progressed over time. I just find everything she does basic and the worst way and basic is probably the nicest thing I can say about any of her writing or her stories. At its best it's basic. At its worst? 
there are a handful more that I could talk about and I actually wrote out stuff for all of them but I figured that I would talk as much as I could and figure out where to stop this part and maybe do a second part. I always say I'm gonna do a second part of things and let's see if I ever do them. But rest assured that I definitely have more popular books that I didn't like that I could talk about in a future video. I know there were a lot on this list that I've talked about in other places not liking but I'm curious if there were any on this list that you didn't know that I didn't like or if there are any popular books that you didn't like that I didn't have on my list today. Day. Let's chat about all of that down in the comments and about any of the books that I mentioned. A disclaimer like this shouldn't be necessary and I kind of mentioned it throughout the video but these are all based on what I find enjoyable in books and about my own opinions about what is good and what is quality so please this is not against anybody who enjoyed any of the books that I mentioned. Again they are popular books so a lot of people love them. A lot of the entries on this list have like four plus stars on Goodreads so I know that I am in fact in the minority in not liking this and I'm not speaking ill or badly about anybody who enjoys these. These were just my opinions. And you guys know that I like to get my salt out every once in a while. I love being critical of media. When people ask me if I even enjoy things, like obviously I do or wouldn't keep reading, but also I enjoy being critical of media so it counts. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. But when they kiss, the girl like disintegrates and re incarnates, not rematerializes. <laughs> It'd be a slightly different story. Be nice to me in the comments. Okay, bye!